With Mario Kart 8's second DLC pack coming soon, it won't be long until we're playing the 8 new tracks, but we really can't wait that long so we decided to take a closer look at each one in a track breakdown. This time we're taking a look at the brand new track, Wild Woods. As the race begins, we see right away that we'll be starting in anti-gravity, and there's a good reason for that. We're halfway up a gigantic tree. Everything around us is even taking that into account. The shy guy on the left? He's hanging out on a platform. The three toes and the shy guy on the right? They're watching from an extended branch. Even the starting line itself is made up of platforms built onto the tree. Toads are watching from there too. It's a cool little detail as they literally look down at you in order to watch the race. But that begs the question, how did they get there? Well, if you look to the right, there's a ladder leading up to the higher platforms. But what about getting to that ladder? Well, even that's answered. As players circle back around to this point at the end of the lap, we can see a makeshift elevator full of toads heading to one of the lower platforms. So, incredibly enough, there really is an explanation. But let's go back to the starting line real quick. Did you notice what the banner was? It's actually a hammock tied between the two platforms. We can't see any toads or shy guys lounging on it though, so the style might just be a coincidence. As we continue to the first turn, we can see other tiny details such as a bird flying across the sky and the sun peeking through the treetops. But something much more subtle is the rainbow that appears as we take the turn itself. It's so tiny and quick that you'd never even notice it normally, yet that's the level of detail Nintendo is putting into these tracks. After the turn on the wooden planks, we return to the tree branches where the track levels out. However, this is still considered an anti-gravity section. The player is then given a choice between two paths. The one on the left is much more straightforward, but the one on the right has several ramps that players could use for trick boosts. Which one you use is more a matter of preference. But after this split, the track comes back together and we enter the tree itself, and the massive Shy Guy Village. Their homes are everywhere with bridges and zip lines to help them get around. Even the first house on the right has a bridge to help the Shy Guy reach his home. The track itself has wooden barrels spread here and there to act as hazards, and the planks are not uniformly laid out which leaves holes for players to fall into if they carelessly drift. But getting past that portion launches us into a hang gliding section. Here's where the village really branches out and we can see houses, bridges, zip lines, and shy guys everywhere. The one big decorative element though is the landing pad which has a shy guy mask painted on it. However, the most interesting part of this village is what's at the bottom. In a few of the decent shots to the bottom of the tree, we can see a pool of water. In the background is a water wheel constantly spinning thanks to buckets that go down to the bottom of the tree and carry it back up. This system may be what's providing electricity for the entire village as we can see each house and lamp lit up. But the game actually goes so far as to show where this pool of water is coming from. After reaching the landing pad, the track immediately converts to a normal road with no anti-gravity. A slight turn to the left and we begin racing down the tree following a waterway. This water is the runoff from the wheel we saw earlier. We can even see the buckets on the right. When we finally reach the base of the tree, we see that the water collects into a shallow pool. On the left is a stream that feeds into it, and on the right there's a giant grate on the side of the tree. This is where the water returns to the giant pool at the bottom of the tree that we saw earlier, where it can once again be collected by the water wheel. It's even on the proper side. In fact, the water from here falling into the buckets is likely what keeps the wheel turning. It's incredible to think that an entire community and the way it functions is told in this single track. But the base of the tree is also where we see the Toad Village. We could see glimpses of it as we went down the waterway with stone bridges, fences, and cabins. Coming out onto the water, we see the full scope of the village and the toads everywhere. The track itself widens here, but the focus is hitting the boost pads on the giant leaves. This leads to a ramp that returns the track to anti-gravity and leads back up the tree to return to the starting line. However, if you have a mushroom or a star, you can take the ramp on the left for a slight shortcut to avoid the bend in the road. The Toad Village itself isn't hiding too many things, but we do see that the house on the left near the ramp is where the pulley elevator originates. If you remember, this is how the Toads got to the viewing platforms at the starting line. Looking behind us, we even get to see what their view is like, and it's a shot of the village. But it's not just the cabins that were designed for this village, but the paths and rows that lead to each house. It just goes to show that these wild woods have been tamed by the Toads and Shy Guys into a fully functioning set of towns. It's kind of amazing when you look at it that way. But that's just one track from Mario Kart 8's second DLC pack. We'll be breaking down the others very soon. Until then, make sure to stay tuned to Game Explained for more on Mario Kart and other things gaming.